Hey everyone, it's Nick from Sure Dividend here. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing monthly dividend stocks, so consistent dividend stocks that pay you dividends every month. Uh, if you wanna follow along with this video, I suggest you go to the description and download our list of all the monthly dividend stocks, along with their associated financial metrics like dividend yields, payout ratios, and those sorts of things. So uh, let's dig right in. The first monthly dividend stock we're gonna talk about is AGNC Investment Corporation, which is an internally managed mortgage real estate investment trust that primarily invests in agency back or sorry agency mortgage backed securities. It operates by generating income on its invested assets minus borrowing costs. AGNC trades on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange with a market cap of seven point three billion dollars. Next up is Apple Hospitality REIT. Now this is an externally managed equity REIT that's focused on owning hotels and other tourism properties. The trust owns more than 200, 200 hotels in thirty three states and has overall control of nearly thirty thousand guest rooms. Apple Hospitality trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $3.9 billion. Next up is Capital Finance Corporation, which is a business development corporation or a BDC that provides debt and equity investments to companies in the low and middle market. The company typically invests between $5 million and $50 million per transaction and focuses on companies with more than $4.5 million in annual EBITDA. Capital Finance trades on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange with a market cap of just $128 million which means that this is a small cap stock and you should be wary of the risks associated with that before you make an investment. Next up is Chatham Lodging, which is a real estate investment trust that invests in premium branded, upscale extended stay and select service hotels. The REIT trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $902 million. So another small cap stock and please make sure you're aware of the risks before making an investment in this company. Next up is Chorus Aviation, which is an airline holding company based in Canada whose main asset is the ownership of the Jazz Aviation Airline. The company is headquartered in Halifax, Nova Scotia and completed its initial public offering in 2006. Chorus Aviation trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange in Canada with a market cap of Canadian dollars 1.0 billion. Next up is Chorus Entertainment. Now, despite the similarity in name and the fact that they're both domiciled in Canada, these companies are not related to one another. Chorus Aviation and Chorus Entertainment. Uh, notice how they're spelled differently as well. Chorus Entertainment is one of Canada's largest media companies and owns and operates many of Canada's most iconic media brands, including 15 conventional channels, 45 specialty channels, and digital syndications with other brands like Nickelodeon, Disney, and YTV. Chorus Entertainment trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker CJR.B with a market capitalization of 1.5 billion Canadian dollars. The company also trades over the counter in the United States with the ticker CJREF. Next up is Creus Energy Trust which is a utility company that's structured as a trust and is based in Canada. The trust has significant operations in the United States with a presence in 19 different states and the District of Columbia. Creus Energy trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market cap of just 427 million Canadian dollars. The company is a small cap stock and investors should ensure that they're aware of the risks associated with this before investing in such a small business. Next up is Cross Timbers Royalty Trust. A royalty trust that derives its net income from fractional ownership in oil producing properties in Texas and Oklahoma. Cross Timbers trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of just $88 million, which makes this company a nano tax stock. Sorry, a nano cap stock. This is going to present significant liquidity concerns for investors with large portfolios, so uh, make sure you really do some due, due diligence here and understand the risks that you're uh, undergoing before you make an investment in this trust. The next monthly dividend stock is Dream Global REIT, a Canadian real estate investment trust with, global, with globalized operations in Germany and Austria. Dream Global trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker DRG.UN and uh, trades with a market capitalization of 2.4 billion Canadian dollars. Next up is Dream Industrial REIT, which is part of the same family of REITs as Dream Global. Dream Industrial is a Canadian industrial real estate investment trust that primarily focuses on multi-tenant properties. The trust trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker DIR.UN with a market capitalization of 1.6 billion Canadian dollars. The next monthly dividend stock, and the last stock that's in the Dream family of real estate trusts, is Dream Office REIT, which is a Canadian real estate investment trust that owns some of Canada's most iconic real estate, including a fractional ownership in Scotia Plaza in downtown Toronto. Dream Office REIT trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker D.UN and trades with a market capitalization of 1.6 billion Canadian dollars. Next up is EPR Properties, which is a triple net lease real estate investment trust that focuses on entertainment, recreation, and education properties. 
The trust trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $4.1 billion. Next up is Enter Plus, which is a producer of crude oil and natural gas in Canada and the United States. The company has exposure to some of the premier energy geographies in the United States, including the Back and Three Forks region in North Dakota and the Williston Basin in North Dakota and Montana. Enter Plus trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $2.6 billion. Next up is Gladstone Investment Corporation, which is a business development company, or a BDC, that makes debt and equity investments in early stage private businesses. The debt instruments consist of senior term loans, senior subordinated loans, and junior subordinated loans, while the equity side focuses on common and preferred stock. Gladstone Investment Corporation trades on the NASDAQ exchange with a market capitalization of $336 billion. The next monthly dividend stock that we'll discuss is Gladstone Capital Corporation, a closed-end business development company that makes debt and equity investments in early stage businesses. The BDC's portfolio companies typically have between $3 million and $15 million of annual EBITDA. Gladstone Capital Corporation trades on the NASDAQ exchange with a market capitalization of $234 billion. Next up is Gladstone Commercial Corporation, which is a commercial real estate investment trust that invests primarily in single tenant and anchored multi-tenant net lease assets. It owns approximately 11 million square feet of office and industrial real estate in the United States. Gladstone Commercial Corporation trades on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange with a market cap of about $495 million. Next up is Global Net Lease, which is a triple net real estate investment trust that operates in many of the most important global economies, including the United States and various countries in Europe. Global Net Lease trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $1.1 billion. The next monthly dividend stock that we'll discuss is Granite Real Estate Investment Trust, which is a Canadian real estate investment trust that owns and manages industrial real estate properties across North America and Europe. The trust trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of 1.7 billion Canadian dollars. The next monthly dividend stock that we'll discuss is Harvest Capital Credit Corporation, a business development company that makes investments in lower middle market companies that are usually at an early stage of their growth cycles. Harvest Capital Credit Corporation trades on the NASDAQ exchange with a market capitalization of $67 million, which makes it a nano cap company one of the smallest monthly dividend stocks that we'll be discussing today. Next up is Horizon Technology Finance, which is structured as a business development company that focuses on the technology sector. This monthly dividend stock is similar to a venture capital firm, but it uses debt instead of equity to make its investments. Horizon Technology Finance trades on the NASDAQ exchange with a market cap of $67 million, making it a nanotech stock and one of the smallest companies we're discussing today. Next up is Huguenin Royalty Trust, which is a royalty trust that derives its income from an 80% interest in gas producing properties located in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Wyoming. Huguenin Royalty trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $28 million, making it the smallest company in our list of monthly dividend stocks. Next up is Interpipeline, an energy infrastructure corporation that's engaged in the transportation, storage, and processing of energy products in Western Canada and Europe. Interpipeline trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $8.6 billion Canadian dollars, making it one of the larger and more stable companies in the monthly dividend stock space. Next up is Gladstone Land Corporation, a real estate investment trust that invests in farmland and farm-related properties in the United States. Gladstone Land Corporation trades on the NASDAQ exchange with a market cap of $175 billion. Next up is LTC Properties, a healthcare real estate investment trust that owns and operates skilled nursing facilities, assisted living facilities, and other healthcare properties. LTC Properties trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $1.5 billion Canadian dollars. Next up is Main Street Capital, a business development corporation that operates as a debt and equity investors for lower middle market companies those with $5 million to $50 million of annual revenue. The BDC typically invests in businesses who are looking to meaningfully transform their capital structure. Main Street Capital currently trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $2.1 billion. Next up is Orchid Island Capital, a mortgage REIT that operates as an externally managed specialty finance company. The trust's focus is on residential mortgage-backed securities, or MBSs. Orchid Island Capital currently trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $388 million. Next up is Realty Income, an internally managed equity REIT which invests primarily in retail and light industrial spaces. The trust also has a small exposure in agricultural properties and office space. Realty Income is, markets itself as the monthly dividend company and is likely the most well-known stock to pay monthly dividends. 
The company trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $14.4 billion. Next up is Pembina Pipeline, a pure play energy infrastructure company based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The company is known for its strong track record of total returns and its above average dividend yield, which currently sits at around 5.4%. Pembina Pipeline trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $15.7 billion Canadian dollars. Next up is Pennant Park Floating Rate Capital, which is a business development corporation that specializes in debt financing, primarily first line secured debt, senior notes, second lien debt, mezzanine loans, and private high yield securities. Pennant Park Floating Rate Capital trades on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange with a market cap of 509 million Canadian, fi, sorry, 509 million US dollars. Next up is Prospect Capital Corporation, a business development company founded in 2004 that is a leading provider of private equity and private debt for middle market companies. Prospect Capital trades on the NASDAQ exchange with a market cap of $2.4 billion. Next up is Sabine Royalty Trust, a royalty trust that receives income based on its royalty and mineral interests in various oil and gas properties. The trust's geographic focus is in Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. Sabine Royalty Trust trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $626 million. Next up is Shaw Communications a diversified Canadian telecommunications company that operates in four segments, consumer wireless business network services and business infrastructure services. The company trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market cap of 12.3 billion Canadian dollars. It's also cross-listed on the New York Stock Exchange where it trades at 9.4 billion US dollars. Next up is San Juan Basin Royalty Trust, a royalty trust that's entitled to a 70%, sorry, 75% royalty interest in various oil and gas properties in the San Juan Basin in the northwestern area of New Mexico. The trust trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $409 million. Next up is Stag Industrial, a real estate investment trust that specializes in industrial commercial real estate. The trust operates more than 324 buildings in 35 plus states. Stag Industrial trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $2.3 billion. The next monthly dividend stock is Stellis Capital Investment Corporation a business development company that makes investments in small private companies at an early stage of their growth cycle. Stellis Capital trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $190 million. Next up is Student Transportation, the third largest private provider of student transportation and the industry's largest publicly traded company. Student Transportation trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $934 million. The next monthly dividend stock we'll discuss is Superior Plus, an energy company headquartered in Toronto, Canada that operates in two segments, energy distribution and specialty chemicals. Superior Plus trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market cap of 1.8 billion Canadian dollars. The next monthly dividend stock we'll discuss is Solar Senior Capital, a business development company that invests predominantly in the senior secured debt of privately held middle market companies. Solar Senior Capital trades on the NASDAQ Exchange with a market capitalization of $274 million. Next up is Transalta Renewables, a renewable energy infrastructure company headquartered in Calgary, Alberta. The company is Canada's largest producer of wind energy and one of the country's largest producer of renewable energy in general. Transalta Renewables trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market cap of $3 billion Canadian dollars. The next monthly dividend stock we'll discuss is an international oil and gas company called Vermilion Energy. The company is headquartered in Calgary, Alberta, Canada and has leading positions in high net back businesses in Europe, North America, and Australia. Vermilion Energy trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of $4.9 billion. The next monthly dividend stock we'll discuss is Whitestone REIT, a commercial real estate investment trust whose properties are concentrated in the southern United States, including Phoenix, Houston, San Antonio, Austin, and Dallas. Whitestone REIT trades on the New York Stock Exchange with a market cap of $399 million. That concludes today's discussion of monthly dividend stocks. If you're interested in learning more about any of these companies in particular, I encourage you to go down to the description of this video where, where I provide links to written analysis for each company in particular. Uh, I'm also going to give you three homework items as a thank you for watching this video. The first is to email me a video recommendation at nick at sharedividend.com. The second is to like this video and leave a comment telling us what you thought of it. And the third is to subscribe to our channel, Share Dividend, if you're interested in learning more about investing in high quality dividend growth stocks for the long run. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.